you have them. You have two million, including the big blind. Onwards to another one of these diamond suited wheel Sorry, aces. Uh, one point three. This one time in the stewardship of Captain Adams at the controls. Yeah, and he's got that kind of annoying stack, and now he's kind of deciding. Do I want to take like a decent opening spot to win chips or just conserve them? Seven seventy five. Seven seventy five. Wow, and he's coming with a pretty big open sizing. It's it's a little, it's two and a half X. And I feel like this sizing, if you look at the stacks that are behind him, he has Amiri here who has 750 and Mosbeck. And I think he's making it bigger because basically he has to call them and he wants to give Dvoris a bad price in the big blind to call. So it, the sizing is kind of targeted at Dvoris. Mosbach, yeah. spoiling the fun. What a spot, wakes up with ace king. And note, by the it's way, it's off of 1.45, 1. 1. this 1. is so pesky Some for Adams. 775 invested already. He must make this call and Take just 28% equity into battle against Mario here in what has become a three and a half million chip pot. Yeah, a little, little bit of chop equity, but not too much. Ooh. King Jack three and all that chop equity really shriveled up in a hurry. Top pair, oh. top kick from Mosbach. Timeout. <laughs> Look at the dynamite sweat on this turn. A five of diamonds. Yeah, wheel gutty. Nut flush that. draw. Popping right back up to 27% is Tim. Ooh. And then finding the ace, which of course is not enough. Mosbach, top two. Rooting for you. Finds the double. Like, I think that's a pretty common thing. People just double checking their cards before folding. Yeah. Sixes for Ido. No double check needed. Under the gun open here. I mean, it's not a tell you can do very much with, usually, because it's, yeah. it's like they, you know, it's a tell on that they're about to fold right, after right. you've already acted. But yeah. 1-6 into the bin already, along with the 7-8 of diamonds, which, of course, is a pretty one. Lonus not going to be going anywhere. Ace-10 in the big. Is a customer. Let's see three. Ooh. And by that, I just meant cards, not tens. But as we can see, the development, delightful for Lonus. Paired flop texture, things that pocket pairs tend to like. And yeah, Ido bets this. He'll have a bit of a range advantage. Sixes also likes knocking out some over cards, especially of the seven, eight, nine variety that are in many hands that don't really have much interaction with this board, but are over cards to Sergio's hand. Now Lonis with a decision here of whether to slow play or check raise. Maybe with Ace-10, we check raise a bit more often, but the truth is, is that Lonis is a player at this point that I'm very used to making decisions, not based on Silicon Overlord type. Oh my God. Whoa. Six on the turn this is a case card by the way cooler for lonus will there be a path to an escape obviously the river will have a lot to do with that but for the time being wow there's a lot of terrain filling his windscreen 
I mean, I was commenting that my, my feel for Lonis having comment, commentated on him and played with him some is that he's not a person who makes those decisions based on, like, minor blocker effects. He does it more for, like, game flow and how he's feeling and what he thinks about the other player. So in terms of check raising or not on the flop. But now, I mean, he still has a very big hand. I mean, I know we can see that Jesse's beat, but one of the things he's going to be thinking is, okay, my opponent's betting big. He Maybe he likes his hand. I'm beating every other 10 in the deck. Queen 10, other than Jack King 10. 10. Other than King 10, yes. Yeah, so he never has 6-10. So it's like, other than a full house, my opponent needs to have King 10. Maybe he does or doesn't raise King 10 offsuit, by the way. And we have a 10 ourselves. Right. King's I'm, sixes. The combos are limited. Yeah. So he comes just with call. But the pot is big. And note, by the way, Ido looking over, he knows how big that bet was and how big the call is in turn. Seven of spades, not a card that rates to be of any concern to Sergio, and for that matter, to Jesse either, Rast. SPR, north of one, not by a ton. They play 8.7 effective. How greedy will Ido get? I mean, probably pretty greedy. I mean, one of the things you're thinking at this point is, if my opponent has a 10, I want to win a lot. And he's probably not going to fold that. And, uh, you know, I mean, maybe a king folds to a big bet. King might fold to a medium-sized bet. You know, sixes is a great hand to go greedy with because, like, kings blocks a lot more good hands. But you're not blocking a king. You're not blocking a 10. You know, I mean, I think the standardish type thing here would just be to ask for a pot or, you know, a lot all in, you know, that range. I might be a bit in the weeds here, Rasty, but could Ido look to ask for something less than all 8.7 with the direct intention of emerging as a lone chip leader and keeping lowness intact? with a nub, because we know the setup from that point forward. Yeah, and, and he does, and that's a snap call. I mean, Lonis is going to think he's beating value here because, like, he's beating three tens. What he's not so. beating is sixes full as the snap does come in. Yeah. Fold it around. To the boss man, Ido. And you can see now the range opening up for clear reasons. Queen six activates Amiri, Jack 10 offsuit, small blind, 900 back, 200 invested. Yeah, this is like a weird spot because. I mean, you know you're going to have to gamble versus Ido if you put it in, right? There's no folding. But you could fold here and you get like seven free hands and in that time every other short stack has to take the blinds. So, I mean obviously for your chip EV, right, it's plus EV on the chips. But, but you get seven free hands and, it, and it's like what are you really going to do with a couple big blinds? But if one or two players bust during those seven hands or, you know, maybe you pick up aces or kings... Like, a lot can go right. You can earn some money. And I think that's not a raise. Right? 800. 1100. That's only 300k. It needs to be 400k more to be a raise, right? So, like... So the jam doesn't open the action? I think it doesn't. Although, if it's more than half no, but the I, minimum four, click, nine, is one, it one. not an action opening move? No, that's like a limit thing. Okay. Yeah, I Le think in this, it has to be at least the amount of the, the difference. Well, but then, by that logic, would we not, in that previous situation where Ido took the jack six, or the jack four, I digress, we focus upon yeah. what we're dealing with now, we'll revisit... The Jack-10 and all-in for Amiri. Main pot complete. 
The deuce is good currently. Yeah, side pot is dry, and now on the turn, Amiri does pick up the gut shot as action is checked between Theologus and Ido. The two of them checking, and on the river, no help for Amiri. I think he knows Jack High is very rarely going to be a winner here, so... Alex rolls over, bottom pair, and Asan always had his, had his work cut out for him here. Rasti did enjoy a double, but the jubilation was short-lived. He finishes in ninth. And in doing so, collects the first of our payouts here in the 25k GG Millions Live breaking the seal as his third attempt here in Jeju finally yields fruit leaves behind eight he decides it's it's enough it's enough to come and he's picking a pretty big size 1.3 Ooh. How awkward is this for Kose? I mean, it's pretty awkward. You know you're getting called. How's my hand performing? I mean, Lana's just folded, so... Lana's can see a whole round of free hands. So, yeah, he goes with this. And it's totally reasonable because you got to remember... La wow. Oh, as reasonable as it might be. And Rast, I know you pulled up lane on completing the thought, but Chua has... Awakened to two queens on the button. Problems, clearly, for Kose, momentarily. Yeah, I mean, things like this are Probably. always part of Probably. the reason why it's dangerous to put your chips in the pot, because something like this can happen. It's not just the guy that opened, but there's three other players behind him who can all wake up with big hands. And that it is what it is, but I, imagine a I world like in which Lonis in. gets to ladder here off of the crumbs. It's yeah. very possible as Chua covers Ichinose, 8.65 million chip pot. Kose begging not to be showered here. It would be such a disaster. Divorce out of the way, of course, 864. And that flop, not a helpful one. Needle needed. Ten now would do the trick as well as two extra outs are gained. But obviously, a flickering light on the porch of Kose. Can he hit? No. The queens showering Ichinose here and providing the ladder so unexpectedly to Jesse Lonis as Kose will be left to collect $186,000. Hats off to him. Ace 10 ultimately played as the three bet over the top of Devoris. That which led to his demise, aided of course by Queens behind him. 345 is the next jump up to six. Now Chua. Pocket threes, the beneficiary of that exchange with Ichinose. Owen? 2.8, or 2.7. Lonis ripping it in here from the I-Jack with the A-7. Listen, he dodged a bullet with A-6 against Ace-Queen prior to the break, managed to find a double. Dire Straits once again upon his hands here, Ido with Slick. Yeah, just unfortunate, I mean... You know, he has four and a half blinds. Pretty good spot, all things considered, in the hijack. And uh, just runs into it. I mean, like... Ooh. This hasn't been happening that much at this final table, but uh, it happens. S seems like the short stacks were just getting it through, getting it through. Finally, Lanus kind of ran into it last hand. Ace six to ace queen, hit the six. Can you do it again? Well, the flop will bring it into focus. Queen 5-4. Lonis has diamond coverage. 
walking stick, the immediate need. Uh-oh, board pairs. Don't make me say the obvious. Five or a four. Chop for the opportunities. Mm-hmm. Seven million chip pot. Can he fade again? No. A wrap at the table, but I think Jesse can be quite pleased here with this outcome. Can come back tomorrow? Rast, you agree? You know, we don't... We, I don't know. We don't really know. Listen, he did have a lot of chips at the beginning of the final table. Okay, fair. I remember, fair. right? Like, but once he got down to fumes, yes. I would say that the idea of pocketing the pay jump between 8th and 7th, which was a not at all insignificant $67,000, will be met with pleasure. Oh, Mosbach promptly rewarded for putting threes into the bin as Kings pay him a visit. Yeah, I don't think he has a play other than, you know, he might do the thing where he bets half his chips. Right, 1.5. But it, it, I don't think he has a stack that min open is, like, really a thing. And so he jams. So, yeah, I mean, his decision is between something like 1.5 or 2 or, or just nine. jamming. And, I mean, ace-queen off, normally just a really oh, nice... Hand to look at. Yeah, going to jam over the top of it as Chua is a customer. Ooh, <clears throat> big head. Always a quick exhale, by the way, when Ido just snap out of there behind us. I just want to point out, by the way, Chua didn't go all in there with like a short stack to his left in the big blind. Right. He went all in with Ido to his left. Right. That was a. Uh, so he was really risking all his chips. Just an interesting. The, the click back covering three bet, maybe over the or, top. I, you know, n w without evaluating the play, I'm just saying that was his decision, and he was yeah. really risking all his chips. Yeah. Obviously, the range is supposed to be quite narrow in a spot such as that, and the ace-queen legitimate, but not Ooh. drawing live any longer at the 8-8-9 board. Just end it. <laughs> you know, iced by the king on the turn. You know, good for you, Mario. Okay, so today... Yeah, because speak like a very American accent. Pocket fives yeah, now like for like Alex. You have a very nice yeah. hand here. I went to call And it. feels like one okay. you just want to shove West Coast? versus basically uh, a 10 yeah, or 11 big okay. blind stack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, you live in yeah. No, no, I, I've lived in like, Toronto uh, for oh, most of my life. I think this is going to be a collision. Uh, yeah, this is too much hand to fold. Here Russia, we go. This is uh, a big clip. Yeah, on. a second uh, time that Mosbach is taking a spin, yeah, this time yeah, far West deeper Coast, than he was on the first occasion. And this would be harmful. I didn't. I didn't work in New York. So Theologius' the stack, I'm if the fives were not to hold, thirteen point two million. By the way, this would put you into clear <laughs> third if you're Mosbach. Jack seven six, and his rail loves it. There they are, <laughs> Muller and company. He won the 25K GG Millions at the World Series of Poker. I think that's Roland Rakita on the right as well. And what it isn't is a five on the river. And he's going to come over and give a little love to the rail. Love to see that. Buy and just the sheer buy difficulty. Size. Yeah, buy-in size, oh. all of it. It can cause you potentially to question some things, you know, you brick out first one, you come in, maybe you brick out another and you're going, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. Yeah, I'm just saying these are natural sort of dark alleyways that we find ourselves in as Ido finds himself with pocket fives up against an Adams jam, blind versus blind, a call all in rather, forgive me. How will the ace-8 perform? Well... Not great, Not but can counterfeit the fives yeah. <laughs> on the king-10-10 ten, ten board. We add kings to the immediate outs. Now we add a jack okay, as better. well. You see Adams. And a queen. Yes. Third ten, Did not the one, though, as it takes a second, but 
We realize that is not a counterfeiting development. Tens full of fives for it's Ido one, and the board pair. Yeah. Is that Three. mine? <laughs> End of the road. For yeah. Canada's Tim Adams. Yeah, well played, Tim. Uh, Triton legend cash yep. for so much here. Yeah, you know, touching back on what you said, I think there's two Well, hang on one oh. second, just to give Tim his moment. Thirteen yeah. and a half million. In career Triton earnings, this his 17th cash will not pick up his third title as the second time he finds the money here in five attempts. In Jeju, obviously haven't seen the last of him. As Adams can go no further and leaves behind five to do battle here in the 25k GG Millions Live. And you've got to show you can weather the storm a little bit. now a pot where the chip leaders folded and we get to see which of these remaining three gentlemen wants to pick up some chips. Theologus with a pretty weak hand but he has the most chips of the remaining players and might view this as a spot to, to try to chip up. Put some pressure on the two shortest stacks in the tournament. Jack Four suited the responsible kit for the aggression from the button of a newly minted 15 million chip stack coming into this one for the Greek. Devoris. Clear call. Queen seven suited. Agreement. Just solid hand, good price. about this flop? The Jack connecting with Theologus, the Diamonds with Devoris. Interest will be maintained by both parties in a 4.4 million chip exchange. Yeah, Theologus with a decision here if he wants to see bet or uh, check back. Kind of both have some merits. And he decides to come with tiny bet. And again, Devoris with another decision. It's not to fold. It's to decide whether or not to just call or to raise. And if he raises, does he do any one. sizing other than all in? Oh, yeah, he does come with the check raise. I think I started with It's a jam. 5. Alex asks for the count and then, you know, says, I think I'm calling just to kind of ensure that there isn't any unsavory takeaway. Yeah, you, you five, can't bet the five, five, eight, five, eight, seven, five. Oh, you're on call. Yeah. The call? All right. Yep. All right. Alex says call. Shows the jacks and the eights. Devoris draws Before to the queen or the diamond. No, yeah, I mean, of course you should ask for a count. It's a pretty fair fight. A pseudo flip. As we've coined it. Point three million chips. The coin weighted somewhat heavily toward Theologius. Four on the turn, and we remove the four of diamonds from Devoris's outs. Can he connect? Right, GG. No. Okay. A six on the river, and double D gave it all he had. But in the end, left to claim fifth place here in the 25K GG Millions Live. That fifth place finish good will be good for 400. And 52,000 as Alex ascending. Doubled Mosbach up and then hasn't looked back pretty much since. <laughs> and for Devoris, that I don't get it. nearly <laughs> half a million chip payout will bring him up. Is it a new and over that I have $11 already? million dollars no, it's just, it's a in don't career go Triton <laughs> earnings. So Denied you, his win. third title as the Canadians have both been ushered out of the arena. 31st cash, third here in Jeju. Certainly we've not seen the last of Dan Devoris. He plays them all. And he's gonna get some time to hang out. Maybe reset here. There's still plenty of events and opportunities left for Daniel on the docket. It's a window into perhaps 
my romantic resume <laughs> throughout the years. Not as necessarily the issuer of these sorts of things, but, you know, I've had, anyway, pocket tens. We'll, we'll leave that one. <laughs> I'm on it. Mosbach. Happy to rip it. Ace nine, Chua. Glancing down, undoubtedly, at the Triton Poker Plus app for a real-time glimpse at the chip counts. It's a pretty good hand, but I think with the risk premium, I think it's I think it's not one you want to gamble with here being the, the second one in calling. Sorry? Oh, I cannot look at the app during that. Oh, okay. Sorry. <clears throat> we finished doing it. Now. I think you. this is a spot uh, you, you want to pass. Yeah, probably, if, so. if it was folded to yeah. him, he's ripping that himself. Yeah but not calling Mario in front okay. as the rip going all in from the cutoff. So we're going to play. Oh, oh Theologius oh. wakes up with queens. Now he covers both stacks. He says call. They're both all in already. Slightly on the side will be Mosbox tens against the queens. The bulk of everything in the middle. Chua for 28.4. Look what we have here. GG. <laughs> the Lotus is pretty happy right now. I mean, he could punch a ticket to a heads up date I'm with Ido here. In a weird way. <laughs> Plus the 10 or the ace. That is true, yeah. Comes through. For the time being. And the flop, jack, eight, six, queens still in front, and the margin is wide. Let's see the impact of the turn. Oh, oh my goodness. A 10 rolling right off. Note, by the way, that straight draws loom. Theologius wants the nine. Chua would take the seven or the queen. Obviously, blocker effects for both. What a card. The craziest turn card you could have picked. Lost box rail saying hold, yeah! and he has held. Yeah! Elated. Yeah. High fives all around. Not to be overshadowed, though. The loss of Adrian Chua, who I think earned... Quite a bit of respect here as a Triton first-timer working his way into the top four. Rasty, the payout for Adrian, not at all negligible. 573,000. And look at the sportsmanship. Obviously, you know it's deflating, but you come over. Alex, not thrilled either. But he will fight on, whereas Adrian will not. Chua. Notch and one for the Singaporean delegation. 500, 73,000, and now 707,000 on lockup for the remaining three in the online streets. He knows the cookie here. crumbles in this way, both in your favor and against it at times. Four big blinds, though, and let's see whether or not he can slither. As Ido wakes up to an ace on the button, we rage on three-handed. Upstairs he takes us. Pocket sixes for Alex. He'll jam. Just another one and three quarter million. Mosbach comfortably out of the way with the queen eight. Ido flicks in the call and we're off to the races. Advantage quite strong for Alex. Could there be a slight rebate in store? Yeah, another good spot for Alex. Just has to fade an ace, more or less. And he's done just that. I mean, pretty solid flop there. Jack 9-4 as the advantage grows to 85% for Theologus. King on the turn, and all he needs to do is fade Barry. That being an ace on the river. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, bro. Keep rolling. Just when I thought we were maybe putting that behind us here at Jeju 2024, Barry comes back and says, no, I, I'm not done. 
And he had a shower wand in hand on this occasion as Alex Theologis goes from Queens v. Tens versus Ace-9. Booked his date with Ido, then the nasty turn. Mosbach doubles, showers Chua, and now sixes against the ace tray. Barry on the end. And it's down to heads up between Mario and Sergio. Obviously, it's been a wonderful Jeju stop thus far for Theologis. Getting a taste. Some of our Triton regulars, by the way, they're over there on Poker Steak, selling action. Next event on the menu would have been the 50K. No limit. That'll be happening along with the 40K mystery bounty. See, 6-5 deuce. How about that flop? Mario. And a limped one pre pair in the flush draw slips it to Sergio. Yeah. Quick D check back. Now a gutter for Sergio on the turn. And this rates to be an interesting pot now with Mario. I mean, we can clearly see how strong his hand is and his equity lockdown here at 84%. But Sergio, with just enough to make some moves, get some designs on this pot, I mean, I, in my opinion, this is clearly a spot he's going to barrel. Um, 10 high, a gutter to the nuts, two overs to the flop. Yeah, this, this is like a mandatory bet. And, uh, yeah, Mario is most certainly going nowhere. Um, this doesn't feel like a hand he's he's going to raise. Wouldn't be shocked. Sho I'd be mildly surprised, but not shocked. I mean, the thing is, this is just kind of a nice bluff catcher here. He can even just call River on the strength of his king five and the fact his opponent checked and a little bit deceptive. Oh. And here's why it's deceptive, because given the way he played this, he doesn't have a ton of flushes. A lot of his flushes would have bet or done something before this. So This looked like an innocent two liter of Diet Coke and suddenly the river dropped a Mento into the bottle and the eight of diamonds gives Mosbach a king high flush 10 high straight for Sergio, 8.4 in the middle, and there will be blood, Rasty. I, I think Mario's going to check this and probably go for check raise. Okay, he's not. Interesting, but he's choosing a small sizing here. So this is an interesting spot for Sergio. When he goes like half pot, like Mario is hoping he gets raised, he can do this with some some, you know, eights up, nines up type hands, and definitely a seven, all of which Sergio's beating because he has 10 seven. So Sergio can find a class of hands that Mario's doing this for value with, which is the main class, not the traps. 10 million, yeah, and he's raising here to charge those hands. The unfortunate news is he's gonna find out at some point, we'll see if Mario does some time bank acting or whatever, that it's gonna be for all of Mario's chips. And, and this is that unfortunate spot where you're raising for value only to find out that you're now bluff catching when your opponent comes back over the top. Well, let's recreate things. It was a limp from Sergio preflop with the 10-7 off. Check, off. check back from Mario. 6-5 deuce. It went check, check. Turn. Sergio picked up the gutter. He was the betting party as Mario slipped it to him. 2.4 got check called by Mosbach. Now he leads for the 3.4. And Ido saying diamonds are not what I think I'm up against here, making it look like 10.8. And now it's just a matter of time before the full 20 million is unloaded. Yeah, I mean, I don't, Sergio, I, I don't think he's ruling out diamonds. It's just that his hand is strong enough that he's beating a large class of hands that Mario might be donking with there mm. for like not that big a size on the river. But now after this point, he no longer thinks he might not be up against the flush because Mario's really his only value hand at this point is a flush. So, and probably not a really small flush. So it, it's biggish flushes. 
or a bluff. And there are bluffs. For example, a hand Mario could be bluffing with would be like, let's say he went for value with 9-5 off with the f 9 of diamonds. Okay. And then he got raised to 10, to 10, mil 10 11 million. Yeah. That hand is not beating any value that Ido has. Right. And now he's like, well, I'm going to take a hand here that's no longer beating any value. I was value betting, but I'm not beating any value. I have the nice nine of diamonds blocker, and I'm going to rebluff with it. You know, stuff like that is all, like, when Sergio's thinking about the hands, like, that's what he's thinking about that he's beating. He doesn't think about it all that long, though, as he finds the right fold. and we He's taking a hand that has a nice blocker in the king. It's kind of a little too weakish, uncomfortable calling, and you make it a four bet bluff. It's the same dynamic and heuristic as what the big blind does versus a button open off of like 25 bigs, where you get the ace x and king x stuff offsuit that three bets there. So, if a very similar dynamic, I suggested it was a three bet from Ido, of course. 4.5. I know it was a limp from Mosbach, raise, and then the limp three bet. And here he is raising the limp of Ido in turn. He's got it ace nine suited, and he is all over Sergio. Will defend with King Eight. And this is, this is a big pot here. We got a stack to pot ratio of less than two to one. Mm -hmm. Sergio with only 15 blinds behind. Oh, a nine in the window. Jack and a 10 with it though. Ido, the two way straight draw. Back and a door queen. Clubs, bottom pair for Mario. Queen, not the dummy end because he has a king, so it. Makes him a king high straight. Interesting flop because Mario has kind of a weak showdown value type of hand. And he's out of position. And Ido has a reasonable draw with a hand with little to no showdown value in position. So this could be the type of hand where money gets put in the pot. Sure. The in position player more or less semi-bluffing in the out of position player uh, calling and really hoping for bluffs and semi bluffs you know he also has backdoor clubs I mean Mario's going nowhere this is like a very easy call and I don't think there's any other option at this point in the hand I don't 2.7 the sizing. Mosbach calls another 5.4 into the middle and oh. the queen right away. But note that it comes in club form, Rasty. King high straight for Sergio. He's delighted. Exactly one is the stack to pot ratio for him from this point forward. And how much of it is he going to stick in provided that he's the man that's left to act? We're on Mosbach though. I wonder if Mario is going to kind of like turn his hand into a bluff here. Yeah. 3.6. I mean, he has a reasonable hand to do it because a nine has zero showdown at this point. If somehow your nine isn't good, your opponent will bluff. And um, I mean, he has a lot of equity. Ace over card to make Broadway as well as the nut club draw. And the nine, while it has no showdown block value, it is blocking two pair. Okay, and Sergio just calls in position. You surprised by that? Um, no, not really. I mean, there's after calling, they have a half pot size bet left. Okay. So he probably he's he's going nowhere. The only card that would maybe make him would be a king, and then he might still call to to win the chop. Board pair so, and a club don't do it. Yeah. Oh no. my gosh, no. there is the club. He's calling. He has a king high straight and he has a club himself. So Mario's just going to probably win the tournament is probably what's going to happen. 22.8 in the middle. They play 12 effective. Now Mosbach has the nuts. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I mean, he led turn. Gonna, I think, very likely lead River again. Why let my opponent off the hook with maybe Queen X as something as light as one pair, definitely two pair. None of those hands are value betting. His opponent will value bet a king high straight, which we see he has, but probably Different call five. that as well. He doesn't oh, wow. go for the whole thing. He bets just 3.5, Rast. Are you surprised to see it? I am a bit surprised to see that here. Is yes. this inadequately greedy? I mean, I'm not really sure. I mean, I think it's a spot where um, he has some value hands that might actually want to do this. Like, what if he had a king high straight himself? Like, that is a hand to me that makes more sense to do that. With the nut flush, I would just ask for it all. And you see the look on Mario's face as Ido calls rather quickly, shows the king high straight. Sergio. Ace king once more. This time suited. Mosbox got a couple of sixes across the way. Yeah, this this is going to find its way in preflop. Just two hands that are much too strong here. Heads up for, I mean, we're talking about like 16 blinds effective or something. Sergio plays it as a limp. All in declared by Mosbach. Ido practically beating him into the pot happily with the ace-king suited, which is on the lean side of a coin flip. On his feet goes Mario. Sergio joining him here. This one is for the tournament, it would seem. Immediate for Mario, virtual for Sergio, who trails behind and needs this ace-king to hold. Did you or rather Mario jump in front. Forgive took me. the scarf off to sweat this. Oh my God, <laughs> you want to talk about sweat? This deck is out of its mind. Eight, seven, four. Six is in front with the gutter. Not flush drawn two overs for Ido, who actually is a 1% favorite with two to come. Now, advantage Mario. As the three fails to improve Ido, can the Spaniard find the double? And maybe the title right behind it. The river will tell. No! Let's go! Boom! Wow, Mario did it. He just short stacked. 